And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for June 12th. Only two systems active right now. The remnants of Cristobal still going strong as an extratropical cyclone over the Hudson Bay. And Invest 98W, which was named Butchoy by the Philippines. And they've got it down as a tropical depression, which it may well be. We're not quite sure, really. Cristobal way up there um, beyond our map and cluttering everything up there. Day 12 of hurricane season. And we've still got that 10% chance in the Bay of Biscay, believe it or not. Um, it's got a few hours and we'll see what happens. Day 29 of the Eastern Pacific hurricane season, nothing active here. National Hurricane Center do have a 30% chance out for a five day system, but we're not confident on that one just yet. 90% chance of Invest 98W becoming a named storm on the JTWC at least, um, or the JMA indeed, um, but not just at this time just yet and in the southern hemisphere no cyclones active at this point the uh, 2019-20 animations are expected by next week now because we've just done our reanalysis. 98W has 30 mile an hour winds and a pressure of 1003 millibars a CDPS stage 2 5 miles east southeast of Olongapo 14.8 north 120.4 degrees east puts it just about over land. It will move over water very shortly over the South China Sea and become a tropical storm. We're now expecting it to weaken back to a depression before it makes landfall in southern China. So we've gone from a Category 1 from the GFS model to a Category 2, then a Category 3 from the HWRF. Now, just the 48-hour lifespan at best is what we're looking at on that model run there. In the North Atlantic, you can see things generally pretty quiet. That tiny little system the National Hurricane Center had down yesterday has really dissolved into a bunch of nothingness really near, the, near Barbados. Um, what you will notice here more than anything, I guess, is the huge amount of dry air off the coast of Africa. The Gulf of Mexico looking fairly quiet. A few thunderstorms blowing up in Mexico and in Florida and Cuba. The Eastern Pacific, uh, still looking interesting there. Um, you've got general amounts of convection, but it's all scattered all over the place. There's not much going on with it. Um, but nonetheless, National Hurricane Center have a 30% chance in the next five days for one area in the Eastern East Pacific. Somewhere near that convection on the right-hand side, I believe. At the Western Pacific, you can still see this very sloppy mess that is Invest 98W, of course, Tropical Depression Buchoy by the Philippines. 90% chance of developing by us at this point, uh, and it probably will, but it will uh, not intensify quickly by the looks of things. Well, unless the models are wrong, HWRF is still calling for a Category 1. Southern Hemisphere looks like this, rather quiet, a um, bit of uh, blow-ups there just north of Fiji that's been dying, down, dying out in the last couple of days, and a small thunderstorm over the Coral Sea. The Indian Ocean, what was 94B, has been deactivated, an invest that moved inland over India and has been extremely disorganized and extremely broad, and you can see on the uh, eastern coast of India there lots of thunderstorms blowing up, and that could of course cause flooding. In the eastern Pacific, sea surface temperatures fairly warm, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius, though uh, staying around steady. The, the Atlantic still uh, taking the hit from Cristobal's upwelling in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, but the rest of the ocean is looking decent. It is around on par with some of those top seasons, 2005, 2010, in terms of heat content and heat potential right now. We're really watching this season very closely. The North Indian Ocean warm still as well, um, not quite as warm as it was, but the West Pacific also very warm, um, and the Philippine Sea there, 30 degrees plus. Sea surface temperature anomalies, you can still see a rather prominent La Nina feature in the Eastern Pacific, which means it might be a bit slow to start there this year, the way it's going. The Atlantic and the rest of the world really quite warm in comparison. Invest 98W, here's a close-up of the uh, infrared satellite imagery. You can see that massive bulk of convection displaced to the west of where we believe this system's eventual center will be. It's unclear whether it actually has one or not. We've not quite got to visible imagery today just yet. Obviously, we're entering Friday now in the Philippines. Um, and 
not much else to say at this point. Wind's fairly light. We saw some ASCAP passes earlier, not getting more than 30 miles per hour. Um, and you can see the water vapor image there as well. There's not a huge amount of rain falling over the Philippines anymore. And that will probably stay the case for a little while because most of that convection, as I say, this place to the west. So um, it would appear that most of the rain has passed from the Philippines, but it could still be a big rainmaker for wherever it ends up next, whether it's Hong Kong, Macau, or some of the southern provinces of China could even still get as far as Hainan. The HWRF model is the only one that wants a typhoon out of this. Other models there, not many to choose from, calling for a mid-range tropical storm. Wind shear, according to the, all of these models, really on the rise, although the HWRF does slip down there, not causing that potential intensification phase. What also makes the HWRF stronger is more time. You can see there, slower trajectory and further south, giving it more time to potentially gather pace. On June 12th, 2014, I remember it well, Christina peaked as a Category 4. We gave it 155 mile an hour winds after the fact, officially 150. Tropical Storm Nanark was peaking in the uh, Arabian Sea and the remnants of Mitag were moving off towards the northeast and were about to affect the southern part of Japan. Those were the only three systems that were active on this day. Several other seasons that had activity starting up. It is one of the main weeks for those first real storms to start developing over there in the Eastern Pacific and a few in the Westpac too. So here we are then. The next name on the Atlantic naming list is Dolly in the Eastern Pacific. It would be Boris in the Central Pacific. The next name on list one is Hone. In the Western Pacific, the international name is Nuri. Of course, the Philippines named it uh, Butchoy not so long ago, well, about a day ago now. Um, in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti. And in the Southern Hemisphere, in the Australian region, if we got another storm anytime soon, it might be a while yet, it would be called Imogen. In the um, Southwest Indian Ocean, Kundai. And in Fiji, Fiji region, the South Pacific, the next name on the list is Yolanda. That's all for now. We're back with another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.